Hi there, it's Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a video about the N1 dental implant. We're talking about the trioval conical connection and how this needs four millimeters of vertical tissue when you're doing a sinus lift procedure. We're going to be using the DTX Studio software to evaluate the residual bone height and to see how we're going to do this procedure to place the M1 implant. Looking at this, we can see there's 7.5 residual bone height, so measuring from the crest to the sinus floor. And this allows us to do some planning. We're going to be planning for a 9 millimeter N1 implant. So we also want to assess and evaluate the vertical tissue height. So we know that we want to have four millimeters above the platform and specifically above the platform shift. So if we mark this in the software, we can position the implant to just make it so we do have that four millimeters of soft tissue because we can see the soft tissue from the STL file that's been merged into the CBCT software. Looking at this, there's the soft tissue we need. So now we can see that we're going to be subcrestal on this placement by cross-sectional view of one millimeter. There's going to be parts that are deeper. So we're measuring this from the lowest point from the crest of the tissue to get to that four millimeters of tissue that's required. Once we do this, then we're able to evaluate where the tip of the implant is going to be and then how the crestal bone surgery is going to happen. So looking at this, we're going to see that the implant is going to be positioned in a fashion that allows for the tip to be really grabbing in the floor of the sinus. We're going to be using some burrs to move that floor of the sinus and we'll go over that in just a moment. But you'll notice that we can do this procedure through a crestal bone approach which minimizes the trauma for the patient, allows the patient to have a surgery that's not going to be overly um, post-traumatic for them, and the post-operative sensitivity won't be that bad. We'll also be placing on an abutment, which is called a base abutment, and we'll show you this in the surgery in just one moment. We're going to be getting started in the surgery. The M1 base abutment ends up in the junctional epithelium, so you have the connective tissue, which is against the crestal bone, and then this seals off the whole complete area for about one millimeter to 1.5. And then the junctional epithelium takes up the rest of that four millimeter total. So this makes a nice seal around the implant, and this tissue stays very vertical. This is the key point about this implant, is you get exceptional vertical soft tissue, which helps to seal the implant, which gives it a long-term success. And we're hoping this, this implant is going to be there for the patient's whole life. And that's my goal, is not to sit opposite a patient and be disappointed in the near future. So looking at this, we'll make a template to place the implant. So this guide is going to be used to use that first drill, which is the two millimeter drill. Now this is outside of the protocol of the N1 implant, but I like to do this to get that position the angle and the depth all marked out from the CBCT uh, software so that I can see this and plan the implant to be in this position. Then we'll go with the protocol for the N1 implant and we'll go through that with you as we go through this case. We'll take another look at the DTX software and we're going to measure from the top of that guide to one millimeter short of the sinus. And this is where we're going to end with that two millimeter drill. So this gets us into a position where we know exactly where we are based on CBCT software, which makes me feel very comfortable about having that case in an ideal position. Because we don't want to just puncture the Schneiderian membrane, we want to go in there and be very strategic. We've also placed a couple implants in the anterior. We're ignoring that right now, but uh, those have been placed a little bit earlier on the same day. We'll do an H flap and raise this so that we can get a good look at the bone. And as we do this, we're doing an incision mid-crestal so that we can come back and close this uh, around the healing abutment. So we wanna make sure all the tissue tags are cleaned out and that this area is gonna be nice and well-designed for the implant to have success. 
We're going to use the Osseo Director drill first, and this is a sequence. So the Osseo Director is a tapered drill, and this drill has a unique uh, shape. It has a tip that is pointy, so we have this drill that's going to be operated at um, you know 800 is what I like to go and using water we will go from 1.8 to 2.4 so this is going to slide into the two millimeter osteotomy really easily and so as we go in here we're going to measure remembering that it's plus one so I usually like to take a ruler and measure where I am but when we go in here it's going to follow that two millimeter guided hole perfectly because this is 1.8 and it's going to cut to the 2.4 and we're going to still stay one millimeter short of the Schneiderian membrane and the floor of the sinus. So we get this reference mark and we can see that this is where we want to be from the bone now. So we're going to do osseo densification using the Densiber from Versa.com and you should check this out. This is a pretty cool system. Instead of tapping on the sinus and getting someone to have some problems, we don't want that, like tapping things up. This actually rotates in a reversal mode and makes the sinus lift up and densifies the, the bone around the whole osteotomy. So you're able to do this and you can check this out at versa.com. So we want to make sure that we don't oversize the implant for this area. We want to be at least 0.5 millimeters within the width of the implant. Now what I chose to do now is to take the Osseo Shaper drill which comes with the N1 system and it has a non-cutting tip and this has been scientifically proven to get into the right uh, location when you're putting it in to have the right torque. So notice that the tip is not cutting so it will help to push this area up as well and to cut the perfect osteotomy for the implant. So looking at this, we're going to go in with this Osseo Shaper and we're not going to use water and we're going to go at 50 RPM. So very delicate compared to most drilling procedures. This is going to be in a, a clockwise drilling sequence. So we're going to start to go into the osteotomy, staying short of the sinus still and staying inside that Osseo densification. So we can do this and generate some bone chips and make the osteotomy the perfect size so that we can get you know, 50 to 60 newtons of force. Because it's thought that if you get the forces too high, this can cause a problem, especially with the osteodensification procedure. So we want to improve this. So then we'll place the N1 implant. We're gonna be using a 4.8 by nine millimeter implant with a platform shift of 0.8 millimeters. So very generous and strong, so extremely strong platform shift. And the goal is to get this platform shift four millimeters from the surface of the tissue, so it gives you four millimeters of soft tissue. So if we look at this, we can see the trioval conical connection is marked in red. And above this, we're gonna use the marks that go one, two, three, four, and this is allowing you to know the depth of the tissue. So we're able to then put the implant on the driver and to know exactly where the implant is relative to the soft tissue. So this is the important part is to making sure that you're having four millimeters above the platform shift. And this is going to give you some long-term success in most instances. So as we go through this, we're going to use the driver. This is actually a 4.0 in the example. But we're going to show you a positioning of a 4.8 millimeter platform shifted N1 implant. So it's designed for bicortical stabilization. What do we mean by that? So it's going to go into one cortex. And since we have osteodensification here, we have uh, the ability for this to grab in the outer cortex and also at the uh, sinus. Uh, area so the floor of the sinus it's going to be grabbing in that area so we get a nice grab and then we can tell that the zenith of the soft tissue is here so we're able to tell exactly how deep that platform shift is as we discussed and this platform shift ideally should be at a position of minimum 3.5 to 4 millimeters and allowing us to get success for soft tissue seal 
And that's what it's all about here is to make sure we're getting that soft tissue seal. And this implant is really designed to do that in this situation. Anterior is amazing uh, tissue support. And I think we can even grow a little bit around it. So you can see that this is allowing us to get this abutment then in position. So we're going to use this N1 Zeal Base abutment. And we'll put this in position with a base driver. So looking at this driver, it's over here on the prosthetic kit and it's a silver looking driver. And this is tightened down to 20 Newtons. So this, let's do that and we'll show you how that works. We'll take it, take the driver to the mouth and then tighten this in. So this is the one abutment one time concept. And so this soft tissue is then gonna heal. The connective tissue is gonna be sealing this implant plus the junctional epithelium. And this allows us to tighten this down to 20 Newtons because we have this implant at 50 to 60 Newtons. We don't want it more, we don't want it less. We want it to be perfect. And that's what the Osseo Shaper does. It allows you to get the exact torque that you want to have for this implant system to be really good. We're going to take an anatomic abutment because we want to get this flared during healing. And watch when I put this in. It just screws down on top of the base abutment. And this is how it looks. We're going to use the base abutment to put the base on. And this is the silver color. Then we're going to come back and we're going to put an anatomic abutment using an OmniGrip mini driver. And this will allow you to heal the tissue in a straight and then turning into a flared concept. So the flare is here in the yellow and the straight aspect is coming in the white. So as you come up from the implant, you get this vertical soft tissue going up straight and then flaring. And it's this flaring that allows for the tissue to go straight up and then flare. And this is what keeps this zero bone loss concept that everyone's talking about strong. And this is from Linkovicus. So you can see here that the anatomic healing abutment goes on. We screw this down. And this is going to support the tissue as well because it's going to give that shape that you need to create that crown. And you can see the beauty of this. And we have this implant being locked in at 50 newtons getting the bone being pushed up and we can see the soft tissue that seals this implant system and this vertical soft tissue is what this is all about and this is providing us with 3.91 millimeters of vertical soft tissue and this is the key to this uh, osseo densification uh, process so this has been dr scott mclean Thanks for stopping in and I hope you get a chance to try this M1 system. So give it a try and uh, stop back, watch the video again, and we'll talk to you soon.